please give a warm welcome to Dr. Joshua Elliott and Dr. Graham Lederer. All right, thanks. Starting to get late now. Best for last joke and all that. Um, we've seen a lot of really cool uh, technologies over the last couple of days, I think you guys will all agree. And uh, they share, um, uh, besides the role that DARPA played in creating them, they share one other in thing, which is that almost all of them would be impossible without one or more uh, critical minerals. So Graham and I want to tell you uh, about a recent competition that we ran geared at automating elements of the US Geological Survey's critical mineral assessment workflow. There are more than 50 minerals identified as critical in the US, and a typical assessment of just a single one of these minerals takes two years to complete. Given the urgency to increase and better secure critical mineral supplies, we decided to crowdsource ideas from the technical community to see if we could drastically reduce the timeline using AI and machine learning. The competition just concluded last week, and the results are very promising, so let's dive in. So critical minerals are defined as commodities essential to national security and the economy. However, their supply chain suffers from significant vulnerabilities. So in addition to assessing the mineral resources in the nation, the US Geological Survey also tracks the production, use, and trade statistics for over 100 commodities. 50 of these exceed the threshold for criticality, owing mainly to their high supply risk. A disruption affecting any of these commodities would have far-reaching consequences on domestic capacity for energy, defense, healthcare, uh, critical technologies for climate change, and other applications. Critical minerals are key elements in countless technologies, including guidance systems and batteries and semiconductors, all of which are essential not just for national security, but also for economic competitiveness. So although supply risk cannot be eliminated, it can be mitigated in part by diversifying primary sources of supply. Resource assessments play a key role in land use decisions that affect the exploration and mining sectors. But conducting these resource assessments takes time, time we do not have. So earlier this year, we partnered with USGS to understand this mineral assessment workflow. DARPA enlisted uh, the MITRE Corporation and the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab to work with USGS scientists and produce maps of their workflows, like the one shown here, and then use these to identify opportunities to apply machine learning to automate key steps. We quickly identified near-term, high-impact opportunity areas around data preparation. Despite substantial triage and, uh, and prioritization, Data preparation still takes about a year for each mineral, easily half of the entire timeline of the entire workflow. And the longest pull in this tent by far is actually extracting usable data from maps. It turns out to be a really hard problem, so we decided to design a competition to address it. So over 140 years of accumulated USGS knowledge is contained in these maps. They provide the most detailed and accurate sources of information we use. For example, during World War II, tungsten was declared an essential commodity for the war effort and exploration focused on domestic resources. So the area in this map is near Bishop, California, and has produced over a quarter of the country's tungsten. Decades of detailed work went into producing this map, and it remained the best source of data available when tungsten was reassessed in 2020. The USGS map catalog consists of consists of over 100,000 geologic maps like this at all different scales. Only about 10% of those have been georeferenced, and half of those are fully digitized vector files needed for analysis. Everything else, 90% of the data, consists of scanned images of paper maps. And that's just geologic maps, maybe a quarter of all the maps that we'd like to use in our analysis. So extracting information from these maps is an incredibly time-consuming a laborious process requiring up to a month of manual effort per map. A significant barrier impeding our ability to conduct resource assessments quickly and utilize the best scientific information. So the goal of the competition is to produce a toolkit that will enable USGS scientists to go from scanned pages to precisely georeferenced individual data features in a tiny fraction of the time it takes them now. Because of the very different skill sets required, we split the competition into two distinct challenges. In challenge one, competitors took raw images of scanned pages, 
identified the map on the page, and then georeferenced it by finding features in the map they could use as reference points and aligning those to known base maps, such as topography, remote sensing, roads, towns, etc. For challenge two, competitors took the same set of maps and extracted every single feature identified in the map's legend, whether it was polygons or lines or points. These challenges included incredibly complex images, many of which had scanning artifacts and distortions, like folds and distortions, and contained maps with over 100 distinct data features. So let's look at some solutions. We'll start with a geologic map of the Black Hills in South Dakota. First, we align it to a USGS topographic base map using quarter coordinates and reference points, for example, Rapid City. Next, we identify features in the legend, in this case, red, green, and blue polygons that represent different geologic units. These outlines are the answers, which we then overlay with the output of machine learning models submitted by performers, and then score those for accuracy. The results are impressive, where a score of one is perfect. In addition to polygons, we also evaluated lines and points, which can be just as useful in our assessments. The final results of the competition were really exciting. Um, we still have some ways to go to meet the rigorous standards of USGS scientists. But literally in just a few short months, with about $30,000 awarded in prizes, competitors produced solutions to these challenges that surpassed the existing state of the art by an order of magnitude or sometimes much more. And we believe many more improvements can be made in the near future. In challenge one, for instance, the top teams used different collections of base maps to ground reference points meaning that further expanded ensemble methods should perform even better. In challenge two, each of those top three teams actually excelled on a different of the three feature types, which means we can combine them together for better performance. Also, lines, and especially as it turns out points, are significantly more challenging to extract automatically than polygons, which, as luck would have it, are by far the most time-consuming features for humans to extract. So these open source solutions are a great starting point for the USGS to implement. We plan to integrate them into our assessment workflows and improve them by combining the best solutions and incorporating human input. The time spent preparing a map for analysis can be reduced from weeks to minutes, and the scalability allows us to simultaneously process thousands of underutilized data sources. Furthermore, these machine learning models can be leveraged to improve future geologic mapping, and have applications in other mission areas, such as ecological diversity. Perhaps even more importantly, this competition shows another way for transition partners to access the incredible DARPA performer base, using targeted challenges that advance long-term objectives. We hope that our experience and the reports and the insights that we produced can help with other agency collaborations, accelerating the application of state-of-the-art machine learning to real-world problems in government. The power of DARPA, of course, is our capacity to innovate. And sometimes the most important innovations are in the models for innovation itself. DARPA has proven time and again the power of challenges to bring together diverse communities and make rapid progress in exciting areas. And as always with DARPA, the most exciting challenges are still to come. Thanks very much.